So our little six by 10 camping bug out trailer project is finally finished. So six by 10, six foot three inch interior height. And final weight on it when we got all done was right at 1,992 pounds. We did 12 by 22 RV windows on the sides. We brought in a 20 amp service. We've got the really cool blacked out Jeep fenders and kind of cool looking mag rims on it. We go around, the screws are all black, which kind of goes along with all the rest of the black trim theme. Ramp door on the back. We did insulate the ramp door when we took everything apart and insulated it. And on the passenger side, we have another window. We offset the window so that when the power vent fan is on, it draws air across the trailer and pulls it all the way through. The trailer does have the bar lock on it, and we added a shed door handle, which is a much easier install than putting in an RV handle. You simply lift up the bar lock, twist the handle, and the door opens. And when you put the hand, when you put it back in and close it, when you twist the handle back, the D handle on the inside latches down. Double security, but it way to get in and out easily from the inside. We have a 250 watt solar panel up on the roof and the wires run into a link solar entry gland. And yes, there's water up there because we just had a heck of a rainstorm come through. But I needed to get this done because it's going to get worse this week before it gets better. Now here we are looking into the trailer from the rear. As we go up on the left hand side you'll see that the solar system is controlled by a 30 amp HQST PWM charge controller. Wires come in to a 30 amp breaker, then run down the wall and go underneath the bed platform to the, where the batteries are located. Access to the under bed platform is very simple. Just remove the backrest from the wall, lift up the platform, mattress can stay in place, and you have access to all the storage area underneath. There is a 70 amp breaker box with two double breaker circuit breakers in it. We're using three of the four possible circuits. One circuit is to the air conditioner which pulls 3.8 amps and just a little over 400 watts. The second breaker runs the accessory outlet on the driver's side wall and the third breaker controls an outlet underneath the bed that the refrigerator can be plugged into when you're using shore power or, and or you could add a battery charger in there to keep the batteries up when you have cloudy rainy days like we're experiencing right now. The batteries are 95 amp hour AGMs. They run down to a 150 amp breaker that then runs to a 750 continuous 1500 watt max modified sine wave inverter. We went with the modified inverter because the only thing that really runs off of the inverter is the refrigerator. We also put in a MIC tuning 6 slot 12 volt fuse block. In order for the refrigerator to run off of solar, you simply unplug it from the wall, plug it into the inverter, turn the inverter on, and the refrigerator can be powered without any kind of shore power. The batteries are good for two days of the refrigerator running 24-7 without a charge, which is why I suggested that they put in a standalone battery charger as well for shore power days or for generator use. You can see there's still a ton of storage 
left in there. And for those that will ask, yes, the batteries are vented. You just can't see the vent as it's on the side of them and it goes down underneath the trailer. The bed is a residential size twin bed in the closed position, which for solo camping is plenty of room for an adult to sleep on it. In the event that you have a significant other that you'd like to take with you, the bed expands to make a full-size bed. To expand the bed out to a full-size bed, you simply pull out the front section of the bed platform, pull the mattress forward, and drop the backrest along the back, which then turns the bed into a residential full-size bed. The Velcro tabs on the wall are just to keep the cushion from flying around while you're tra trailering down the road. We also have a flip-up dining table that can seat two people if you're sitting on the bed and there is enough room for a chair at either end. You lift the table up, pull down the two legs that have locking hinges on them so that they can't collapse underneath you, and there you have room for four people to dine or to work out at your computer, play cards, or whatever. On that wall as well, we mounted an outlet up high in case somebody wants to put in a television. There's also a receptacle behind the television in case you want to sit there and work with your laptop at the table. To collapse the table, you simply reach up to the bracket, pull the lever out, raise the leg, which is held in place by Velcro so that it can't fall down, which I experienced as I was putting this in. And you do the same for the other leg. The Velcro tabs on the wall attach to the Velcro that's on the ends of the legs to keep the table from flopping back and forth while you're driving down the road. The kitchenette area is very simple. We have a 1.7 cubic foot refrigerator that draws 0.8 amps and pulls about 14 watts. The air conditioner is a 5000 BTU window unit. Its intake and exhaust air all goes underneath the trailer. We tried it and it's extremely efficient in this little 6x10 trailer. Our water system is comprised of a sink and a hand pump and under the sink we have two six gallon water jugs. One fresh, one gray. Very simple. The other side of the kitchenette area is just storage. We have storage that's down on the floor and a shelf up above it. The receptacle that you see with the cord running to it is the refrigerator power. That receptacle is powered by the cord that goes under the bed that can be plugged in either to the 110 volt power or running off the inverter. The receptacle to the right of it is a 110 volt receptacle which is also on the same circuit as the two receptacles on the wall near the table. We put a large storage shelf up above there, plenty of room if somebody wanted to put in a microwave and the circuit that the television goes on would handle a small 700 watt microwave without a problem. One of the coolest things that we put in was the Hengs Vortex 2 12 volt fan insert. The fan has three speeds, forward and reverse. So you can either draw air in or push air out. It's really effective when you use it in conjunction with the air conditioner as it draws the cooled air up and at the same time draws the warm air from the ceiling out. Once the trailer is cooled off, you simply shut the fan off and the air conditioner will keep it nice and frosty in here all day long. This is an inside view of the shed door handle that we used as the entry handle on the side door. You can see that the D handle closes over the wall of the trailer, which prevents anybody from pulling it open. When you're inside and you want to open it, you simply lift the D-handle and the door will open. In the closed position, we use a simple slide bolt to latch it. When the slide bolt is latched, the handle can't be moved and it's extremely secure. And for me, it's a much simpler install than an RV door latch. 
This is a pretty small trailer, so we don't need a ton of light in here to make it real bright. I took the original ceiling light that came with the trailer, mounted it on the wall, and used the original switch to control it. Makes it real easy to get light in here when you get in from the outside. Then we mounted a dual LED ceiling light at the rear of the trailer which is more than bright enough to light the thing up at night. And behind the light you'll see a valance that I put across there just so you didn't have to look at the ramp door roller. And as far as the ramp door goes, not really sure what is going to get done with it. For right now it's going to stay the way it is. Well that was it for the, this build. It's a small trailer, it was a fun build, and I had a good time doing it. Probably things that I could have done a little bit differently, but the goal of it was to make it simple to use, inexpensive, warm, dry, comfortable. And I think we achieved that.